<clears throat> it's up date Monday! What's been going on with your big dog? It is an amazing Monday. I hope you are having an amazing Monday. And if you are not, don't let what has been happening bog you down from having one. Speaking of such, it has been 12 weeks of kicking rheumatoid arthritis' ass. I've been kicking rheumatoid arthritis' ass for three months, three months. At first I thought it was four, but it's three months. It's been a long, hard journey, but as we approach the winter, I think I have it a little bit more under control than last year. Eating correctly, taking my medications, and of course working out have been huge components. You could say that it's the guide to beating disease. Speaking of such, I'm doing this because you heavily requested it. It's going to be a guide on how to beat some of the top strategies in Yu-Gi-Oh! That's right, we cracked the code on these particular strategies, and I'm going to be showing you specific choke points, areas that you should be targeting, and what cards you can use to beat them. I also wanna point out that if this is something you want to see, go ahead and show this video some love. Like, comment, do whatever you can to help the algorithm, cause I know this one may feel a little bit late, but the next one ain't gonna be too far away with Burst of Destiny supposedly changing a lot of things. So with that being said, I chop this up into different parts so you can address strategies as they come. Let's go ahead and jump on in. So the first strategy I wanna talk to you guys about is actually a well-known strategy and is sleeper deck this format. Well, kind of not so sleeper since everybody knows how strong the shut all strategy is. Being able to special summon powerful monsters like El Shut All Winda at will, preventing players from special summoning, and then also being able to proc it on your opponent's turn through Shut All Schism. This deck is typically blended with the invoke strategy, so that's exactly what we're going to be talking about how to beat. Now what I've seen a lot of players do is actually interact with Magical Meltdown. Using cards like Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring to try to negate the Magical Meltdown is a legit, oh no, what are you doing, baby? Seriously, do not do this. The reason why you shouldn't do this is not only are you opening yourself up to be countered by Cyframe Gear Gamma, the odds of your opponent having actually an Alistair the Invoker in their hand already is astronomical. So you played yourself, you lost a hand trap, and they could keep playing. Something that players have been told is just stop the Alistair the Invoker upon summon. And that's not a terrible idea if you have a card like Effect Veiler or Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring in your hand. Now the reason why I singled out those two particular cards is because after your opponent summons Invoked Mechaba, you can't really respond with anything else as they'll be able to negate with Mechaba. But one thing that a lot of players have not realized, something that you will now realize, is that if you have a card like Infinite and Impermanence, you shouldn't use it on the Alistair the Invoker. And here's why. Invoked Mechaba can only negate what you discard, Monster, Spell, or Trap. And seeing that your opponent is playing Shadal Invoked, odds are they're gonna wanna set their trap cards. When they set their trap cards following on your turn, you just activate the Imperm. Oh my god, it looks it's almost like Mechaba doesn't have an effect now. It is highly unlikely that your opponent will keep a trap card in their hand, and if they do get rid of a trap card in their hand, you still trade it disruptions. It's pretty simple on how you deal with that, but how exactly do you deal with El Shadal Winda? Well, El Shadal Winda is usually procced on your turn when they activate Shadal Schism. There's a couple of ways around that and allow me to guide you through them. The first way is that if you are playing a deck that doesn't activate to special summon monster effects, take for example, if you're special summoning Black Luster Soldier, Envoy of the Beginning, there's really not much your opponent can do to that. Your opponent can't chain link to activate Shadal Schism and you get another free special summon until your opponent openly activates the Schism to summon the Winda. If they do an easy play around to this, is cards like Forbidden Chalice and Forbidden Droplets, I've noticed that being able to address the invoked board as opposed to hand trapping them to death has been working the best. And the last card I want to talk to you about is how to beat Shut All Fusion. A lot of times when you break your opponent's board, you're going to wind up with some monster special summon from the extra deck. You do not want those on the field where your opponent activates a Shut All Fusion. You genuinely need to keep in mind for this because this is how your opponent gets back into the game. Unless your monster special summon from the extra deck can actually interact with the fusion monster or should all fusion get rid of it. Now one of the most hated decks in Yu-Gi-Oh, probably the most hated deck in Yu-Gi-Oh is Drytron. Drytron is a deck that ritual summons using monsters attacks even though that shouldn't be a physical possible reason. I swear if these cards were colored red nobody would know that it was a ritual mechanic. Regardless whether if you love them or you hate them, the Drytron strategy is one of the top contending decks in Yu-Gi-Oh and of course I gotta show you how to beat them.
So I've seen a lot of players use cards like Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring on the Drytron monsters. This is murky water. Sometimes you may be able to stop their turn or bog down their combo. Other times you're not really doing anything but inconveniencing them. What I have learned from experience is that if you are using cards like Effect Veiler and Infinite Impermanence, it's better safe to be able to stop the Diviner of Herald, as this card allows them to pop off with their combos, go into their rank 6, and do so much for the strategy. Sometimes hitting Diviner or Herald with cards like this can actually force them into subpar boards. At this point, it's extremely hard to stop the Tritron strategy and leave them with nothing, but that's the reason why this deck is considered a top deck. A lot of times when you stop their combo, they just make Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, but seriously, if they can just make Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, that is... Amazing. So with that in mind, if you are using cards to stop Drytron's turn, you really need to use a card like Droll and Lockbird, which will prevent them from searching multiple times, something that this deck does extremely well, or preventing Drytron Meteorionis from ritual summoning or adding cards from the graveyard to the hand. This can be done in a myriad of ways if you're going first, Dimensional Barrier prevents them from ritual summoning, and then cards like Skullmeister in Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion prevent the card from being added to the hand. Now, if hand traps really aren't your thing for your particular deck, then cards like Dark Ruler No More and Forbidden Droplets addressing the board that your opponent makes would be really good, but the problem is playing around that Herald of Orange Light that they could potentially have in their hand. A lot of times the Drytron player will add the Eva to their hand, which in that case is the perfect time to Dark Ruler and Forbidden Droplet, as they won't be able to add that Herald through the effect of Herald. They won't be able to add Herald through Herald, and they play other Heralds. I can see where this is getting confusing, and that's where pictures help. Players are starting to recognize Virtual World as one of the best decks in the format, just because it can play almost forever. It doesn't really care about too many hand traps, and if you hit the wrong spot, boy, you're gonna be in trouble. Now, the reason why Virtual World is so tough to beat is because its end boards can actually be fairly cracked. Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon and Virtual World QB Shin Shin not only make sure that monster effects get negated, any card you activate is banished instead. There's also Virtual World Gate Chuche, which allows them to destroy cards on the field and shuffle back their Virtual World monsters. This is a strategy you do not want them to get started, and fortunately enough, we have the counters. While Virtual World is great, it is extremely susceptible to removal. Cards like Torrental Tribute and Needle Sealing are amazing against the Virtual World strategy because it allows you to crack their board before they're made, and typically when they lose all of their monsters, they're not coming back from that. A rookie mistake that I've noticed is that players will side in cards like Artifact Lancey and Droll and Logbird against Virtual World because of Virtual World Gate Chinglong. Well, I can tell you that the Virtual World strategy really only searches twice, and maybe banishes twice. Virtual World is actually one of those strategies that can pass its turn with a suppressed board if you hit the correct cards. I would never urge you to try to disrupt those graveyard effects like Virtual World Gate, Chu Che, and Ching Wong. Being able to prevent your opponent from searching or increasing the level is just, oh, don't do it. But being able to stop your opponent's most important Virtual World cards is critical. You shouldn't really worry about the other Virtual World monsters, as being able to stop Virtual World Lulu or Lao Lao is the most important cards. Using cards like Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring on either of them, or Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion on Virtual World Lao Lao is going to really put you far ahead and prevent Virtual Worlds from making the board that they want to make. Also want to note that going against the Virtual World strategy, if you remove the card from the field that they target, that they won't be able to summon the monster. Take for example, if they have Virtual World Gate Chu Che on their side of the field and they activate a Virtual World monster to target it, if you just so happen to get rid of Chu Che with Cosmic Cyclone before the Virtual World monster can resolve, the Virtual World monster won't be summoned and they can't activate that effect again. And the last strategy is considered as one of the best decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! and BBW, but for the people that don't like their girls BBW, like, what type of animal are you? Obviously not a beast, beast warrior winged beast, because I mean, BBW. Tri Brigade is considered the best strategy in Yu-Gi-Oh! because of its simplicity, but also for its ability to play around interruptions. The reason why is because the Tri Brigade strategy has so much room to play almost every single hand trap in the Yu-Gi-Oh! card game, you really have to be careful because Crossout Designator can literally stop everything that you want to do against the strategy. So for conventional wisdom, I just want to point out that Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring is literally the worst card against Tri Brigade. More often than not, where you want to Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, if they have side frame gear gamma, you're going to pay for it. More often than not, you probably can lose the game because of this. You want cards that stop monster effects. Seriously, you want cards that stop monster effects, that's how you end their turn. Cards like Infinite Impermanence and Effect Veiler, it's a reason why these two cards are considered as some of the best cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! as they can pretty much be used to stop every single Yu-Gi-Oh! deck right now. Using these effects to stop your opponent's Tri-Brigade monster only after they activated the effect 
meaning that they'll have to banish the BBW monsters in Graveyard for cost is the perfect time to use these cards to disrupt. Also, if Infinite Impermanence is your only hand trap and you see your opponent starting to make Opelousa Bull of the Goddess, then go ahead and save that Infinite Impermanence for Opelousa. Duh, come on. It's almost like Infinite Impermanence is a hand trap that can be used on your opponent's turn, but also can be used on your turn to stop your opponent's cards like Mechaba and Opelousa and Wenda. Oh my God, it's, it's like the card's good or something. So in essence, if you have multiple monster negates, you should stop your opponent's first tri Brigade monster attempting to activate its effect. Typically, they will respond by special summoning Karis, and if you can stop that too, well, that's why you have two monster effect negations. If you can't, the next most important thing is being able to stop tri Brigade's momentum. This deck is built on momentum and does invest quite a bit of resources to making its boards. If you can stop tri Brigade Revolt, the best way to do it is with Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. It is going to be game breaking for them. Also, I want to note is don't let these tri Brigade players cheat. Any Link monster that they special summon with their tri Brigade monsters cannot be brought back with tri Brigade Revolt or special summon for any way in that cheap or form. There are way too many times where I've seen a player accidentally and maybe purposefully special summon Link monsters that were special summoned through the effect of their tri Brigade monsters. Do not let them play you like that. You ain't no sucker, foo. Ya foo. There are some cards that I want to say that work pretty flawlessly against almost all of the strategies across the board. Rivalry of the Warlords and Gozen Match are very powerful Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Since there aren't a lot of Omni Negates in this format, these cards slot in well with helping you break boards and preventing your opponent from making them. Some other stars in Yu-Gi-Oh are Infinite Impermanence and Forbidden Chalice. While Infinite Impermanence could be hit by Cross Out Designator, Forbidden Chalice almost does the exact same thing, can negate cards, players don't normally play it inside of their main deck for that Cross Out Designator, and of course is a quick play spell card, the best icon in the game. Some of your best side deck cards, cards that you probably should consider siding the most, are Joel and Lockbird and Nibiru. Not only does Nibiru hit every single matchup except for the Shut All Invoke that I mentioned before, it's a card that could probably turn the game into your favor. And Joel and Lockbird is just extremely powerful against Shut All Invoked as well as Drytron. This card can completely end their turn. Well, that's pretty much all that I have for the meta counter guide. But of course, if you want to see another meta counter guide, go ahead and love this video, share it with a friend, but more importantly, check out these other videos as I'll catch you on the next one.